is a number full Wednesday, juniors. Join me as we count, solve, and enjoy math. This is Teacher Tin, and welcome to our class. The study of patterns and sequences is indispensable in the study of mathematics. Some mathematicians discover new mathematics by studying patterns. Artists also use patterns to design and create beautiful buildings, houses, tiles, and artworks. For today's session, we will talk about patterns and sequences. Are you ready? Let's go! As we solve problems involving arithmetic sequences, we will answer these two questions. First, what is an arithmetic sequence? Second, what do we need to remember in finding the nth term in an arithmetic sequence? Come on, let's start answering these questions. Look at the set of numbers beside me. Could you identify the pattern? That's right! To get the next one, we just need to add 6 to the previous number. This is an example of a sequence. Do you know what a sequence is? Good job! A sequence is a list of numbers with pattern. The numbers in a sequence are called terms. The terms of a sequence are commonly denoted by a single variable. Say, a sub n, where the index n indicates the nth element of the sequence. The first term of the sequence is a sub 1, the second term is a sub 2, the third term is a sub 3, and so forth. The nth term or general term of a sequence is denoted by a sub n. If a sequence does not have the last term, the sequence is called infinite. Look at the table beside me. Which set shows an example of an infinite sequence? Awesome! Set A doesn't have the last term, that's why it can be considered infinite. Notice the three dots at the end. What do these dots mean? Fantastic! These are called ellipses, and no term following it indicates that the sequence continues forever. How about if the sequence has a sub n as the last term? Good job! The sequence will be called finite this time. Take a look at set B. Set B has 36 as the last term, that's why it can be considered Finite. To make it simple, remember this. An infinite sequence has ellipses after the nth term while a finite sequence has none. Come on, let's try finding out the next term in each sequence and identify if they are infinite or finite sequences. Are you ready? Let's go! Is this an infinite or finite sequence? That's right! This is an infinite sequence. How about this one? Correct! This is a finite sequence. Now let's see this. Very good! This is a finite sequence. What is this? Splendid! This is an infinite sequence. Last one. Nice! This is an infinite sequence. You did great! But wait, there's more. Don't you know that sequences can be classified according to the way terms are obtained? Let us first discuss the arithmetic sequence. An arithmetic sequence or arithmetic progression 
is a sequence of the form, where a sub 1 is the first term, d is the common difference, and the nth term of the sequence is given by a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. Recursively, we can define an arithmetic sequence by a sub n equals a sub n minus 1 plus d given the first term a sub 1. Each term in an arithmetic sequence is obtained by adding a constant value to the preceding term. The number added to any term to get the next term is the difference between two successive terms. We call this the common difference of the arithmetic sequence. It is denoted by letter D. The common difference can be calculated by subtracting two consecutive terms in an arithmetic sequence. Let's look at this example. What is the common difference in this arithmetic sequence? Very good! This sequence has a common difference of 3 between each number. We can use a number line to check that adding 3 to each term will give us the next terms. Let's try another example. What is the common difference in this sequence? Awesome! The common difference in this arithmetic sequence is negative 2 because the pattern is continued by adding negative 2 each time, like this. Were you able to follow that? Let's see. Determine whether the given numbers can be the first five terms in an arithmetic sequence or not. If so, we give a common difference. Let's go! Does this set of numbers show an arithmetic sequence? That's correct! The numbers can be the first five terms of an arithmetic sequence with a common difference of 12 since 27 minus 15 equals 39, minus 27 equals 51, minus 39 equals 63, minus 51 equals 12. How about this one? Good job! The given numbers do not form an arithmetic sequence since 7 equals 19 minus 12 is not equal to 27 minus 19 equals 8. Does this set of numbers show an arithmetic sequence? Yes, they do. The numbers can be the first five terms of an arithmetic sequence with a common difference negative 3 fourths since 25 over 4 minus 7 equals 11 halves minus 25 over 4 equals 19 over 4 minus 11 halves equals 4 minus 19 over 4 equals negative 3 fourths. That was fantastic! This time, Let's try finding the nth term in an arithmetic sequence. Are you up for the challenge? Let's start. To determine any number within an arithmetic sequence, there are two formulas that can be utilized. The first one is the recursive rule. This means that to find any number in the sequence, we must add the common difference and the previous number in the list. Let us say we were given this arithmetic sequence. Can you find the sixth term here? First, we determine the common difference d. Since 7 minus 3 equals 4, 11 minus 7 equals 4, 15 minus 11 equals 4, and 19 minus 5 equals 4, 
then our common difference is D equals 4. To find the sixth term of the sequence, we add 4 to the fifth term, which is 19. So, 19 plus 4 equals 23. Therefore, the sixth term of the sequence is 23. What if we have to find the 724 term? This method would force us to find all the 723 terms that come before it before we could find it. That would take too long. In this case, we will use the n-term formula of an arithmetic sequence to find the 724 term. This is the second rule called the explicit rule. Since we need to find the 724 term or a sub 724 of the sequence, then our n is equal to 724. The common difference d is 4 and the first term a sub 1 is 3. Applying the formula will give us a sub 724 equals 3 plus 724 minus 1 times 4. a sub 724 equals 3 plus 723 times 4. a sub 724 equals 3 plus 2892. a sub 724 equals 2,895. Let's try some more examples. Let's find the nth term in the following arithmetic sequences. What is the 14th term in this sequence? Let's use the formula to answer this question. The common difference is 5 and the first term or a sub 1 is equal to 26. Now, Let's solve. A sub 14 equals 26 plus 14 minus 1 times 5. A sub 14 equals 26 plus 13 times 5. A sub 14 equals 26 plus 65. A sub 14 equals 91. What is the seventh term in this sequence? We can use the recursive rule this time since we just need to find the seventh term of this sequence. The common difference here is 4. Now, let's solve. a sub 6 equals 75 plus 4 equals 79. a sub 7 equals 79 plus 4 equals 83. What is the 37th term in this sequence? Let's use the formula to answer this question. The common difference is 3 and the first term for a sub 1 is 5. Now, let's solve. a sub 37 equals 5 plus 37 minus 1 times 3. A sub 37 equals 5 plus 36 times 3. A sub 37 equals 5 plus 108. A sub 37 equals 113. That was fantastic, students! Now let's go back to our two questions earlier. An arithmetic sequence or arithmetic progression is a sequence of the form where a sub 1 is the first term, d is the common difference, and the nth term of the sequence is given by a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. To find the nth term of an arithmetic sequence, there are two formulas that can be utilized. The recursive, 
and explicit rules. You did great! I hope you learned a lot about arithmetic sequences today. If you did, click thumbs up and share this video to help students like you to count, solve, and enjoy math. Don't forget to click the subscribe button. Again, this is Teacher Tin and see you on our next Number Poll Wednesday.